whole year and we kind of get depressed to say oh my god i achieved nothing nothing happened for me i didn't get promoted that kind of stuff i didn't rank up at world ventures different things in different in your life but everything has a lesson from what you read what you watch the conversation you may have had and it's a good chance for you to jot all that down and the way to do your your goal setting is ask yourself what you want many of us do not know truly what we want you know we say oh i want to make a lot of money do you do you know exactly how much money you want to make do you know exactly how you want to make it and by when you want to make it and what you want to do with that money once you get it if you don't have that you truly don't know what you want it's like people who think they want a new car and then they get it and they get excited and then a month later it wears off and you know you once again look for something else so i would say goal setting is pen to paper um you can start with a brain uh, what do you call it like a, a brain diagram a circle of your goals and then just do arrows around it and scribble your way through it and what we call brain mapping just scribble your way through it writing down different goals maybe it might be physical spiritual it might be uh, financial of course uh, business in world ventures goals for yourself like i will attend uh the three major events in africa in 2020 for my personal growth and development because only when you put something in can you receive something back it's just, that's the way business works um I would say for somebody that's new, here's a goal set. Organize your names list, write it down. I find that people forget the foundation. So here's my uh, your hands, that's the foundation. You build on the foundation, you then grow, and then you, receive, you, you, know, you, you reap what you sow, right? But you reap what you sow if you have a foundation. And what I find is the lower level foundation is just a names list. You know, I'm just getting this here for you. Like a names list. And if you don't actually have this and freshen it up and clean it up a little bit, you're going to really find yourself thumb sucking your way through business and just scrolling through your phone, completely disorganized, saying, oh, I forgot this one. Oops, I forgot this. That's not going to get you the results you want. Okay. So that is probably a goal setting. I just don't push yourself. Um, I won't say don't push yourself too hard. Push yourself. Challenge yourself. But when you write down silly things like, I will be an IMD by Easter. And you just joined up four days ago. To me, that's unrealistic. I'm not saying be realistic all the time, but you need to be someone that has a sense of reality. You've got to live in the world today, okay? So you can eat an elephant a bite size at a time. So if you're trying to lose weight, don't go right down. I am going to lose 10 kilos and, you know, snap. Well, why don't you celebrate every kilo? Cel you know, lose 500 grams, go celebrate. Go lose another 500, celebrate. Uh, enroll one person. Not to say that you, every time you enroll somebody, go celebrate, because you can only celebrate when you get them to four people, right? You work with them to go get four people. And uh, you assist them along the way. So I think you've got to find opportunities to celebrate the small wins, because that all adds up to the big win. There you go. That's me for goal setting. <laughs> Brilliant. You know, I love what you say about um, you know, your goals start with the names list because you all think about the end in mind, right? We all want to have the IMD yeah. when the, earn the million dollars, but we don't start with the basics of actually starting with your names list. So that was a golden nugget yeah. right there. And uh, the brain mapping is brilliant. Um, I love that. Start with a circle and work your way out. I mean, who would have thought of that? That's yeah. brilliant. It's hard to kind of like sit down and just write goals. Like you look at the paper for like half an hour and there'll be nothing on the paper. So when you're brain mapping, it's more like scribbling and we're all doodlers. Humans, humans by nature, creative brain uh, switches on and that's doodling. So, you know, yeah, that'll work. It'll help you for sure. Absolutely. And then just flows into it, which makes perfect sense. So while we're on that same topic, let's talk a little bit about habits because, you know, in order to get where you are in, in, in the million dollars, IMD, et cetera, um, it all starts with our daily habits. So um, what is one daily habit that you've done um, on and put um, that has helped you earn the one, the one million dollar LTE ring? Uh, that's a really, I, I like that question. It's a loaded question. It's a loaded question. Uh, one habit. Uh, there's many, many habits, but I'm going to give you one which I think you probably haven't heard before because I think we've all heard the normal ones, right? Set your goals, make five, ten phone calls a day, show at least one to three people a day. We've all got that. Here's my uh, habit. I made a big decision a few years ago that I knew scientifically what you put in your mouth, in other words, what you eat, will determine how your brain works. So actually, what I'm gonna tell you my habit is this, and I'm not a health freak, 80% of the time, I eat really healthy, 20%, trust me, if you follow me on Instagram, you will know what I eat 20% of the time. And that's all the desserts and the sugars. But basically, I think being very conscious from the minute you wake up, so my number one habit would be try and be aware, be uh, mindful of 
uh, everything from posture to eating. But eating does really affect the way you think about yourself, uh, the way your brain actually uh, processes because it's not foggy anymore. And it allows you to kind of like reflect a lot easier. So I want to give you a quirky one. So my quirky habit would be be conscious of what you put in your mouth and be very, very aware as to what it does to your insides, your internals. Your brain is an organ. So if you're just filling up with a deep fried, you know, Kentucky fried chicken, well, <laughs> you might not be as effective or efficient as you want to be. That's all. You know, you mentioned something, you know, about eating habits. Um, that's something that we never think about in terms of our daily habits. Um, is, it, yeah. is it true that you are what you eat? Yes, you are definitely what you eat. Trust me, you are, eat, you are what you eat. And I say this from a, like a, a biology perspective because I like to look at clinical studies. It's really weird. I have weird little habits. But anyways, the point is you are what you eat because not only you know, physically, because some people are skinny, but it does still affect you. There's visceral fat. There's things that weigh you down. Um, and let me ask you another question. If they tell you, hey, you want to, you, you read leadership books. I've got a whole bunch of books up there, right? Up there and it, down there in the cupboard. And everything about leadership is about, you know, behave one rank above, above where you are. Um, dress one job description above your job description. Um, have elevated conversations. And in the working industry, in the working world, when I was working, you want to be one step ahead and you got to dress a little bit better according to the, the manager. Don't dress like the bookkeeper, dress like the accountant, uh, chief accountant. And those things mean that. And the same comes with food right? Because if you're eating a bunch of um, food that's really fast food and not nutritionally dense, it's actually caloric, uh, calorific dense, then you've got to ask yourself, what are you aiming for? If you're going to eat one level above, ask yourself, what do the Marcusettas of the world eat? Do they eat low quality food or high quality food? What do the Tony Robbins of the world eat? Low quality food, high quality food. And yeah, there's a cost to that. But the cost is now. It's better to pay the price now than pay for it in 20, 30 years when your medical bills are skyrocketing and you didn't achieve your financial goals because you were foggy the whole time and you just couldn't, you didn't have the zest for life. You didn't have the excitement for life because you were kind of eating low quality food, you know? Makes perfect sense. So stay away from the Mickey D's drive through <laughs> yeah, Exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, on it, let's talk about this year. Um, you know, it's been a tough year for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people have dropped rank in World Ventures. Some people haven't hit the ranks that they wanted to. Um, a lot of people are frustrated and they haven't really gotten the results that they'd expected to get as well. So we're all feeling it. And bearing in mind that uh, there's a lot of people in World Ventures that are still doing this part-time. So what does that mean? They are still juggling their full-time job, juggling their family and the kids. And, you know, I just wanted to... On that point, you know, those people are obviously in desperate need of a holiday, but they don't want to lose momentum in their World Ventures business at the same token. Right. So they're kind of stuck in between. What do they do? So why don't you just help us out? How, how would someone in that position balance World Ventures, family and holidays, especially coming into the festive season? Okay. So there's two questions in there. First of all, what's our strategy for the Christmas? Number two, number, number two. but number one is um, the power of part-time. So instead of having a pity party for uh, people doing it part-time, I'm the opposite because technically I am probably the most part-time person ever, even though I know it was like, oh, you're now full-time. Well, actually my first five, six years were part-time and then actually no, my first four, four or five years were part-time. And then it really became a six month travel, six months work. And this year alone in 2019, I just worked out, I've done 28 trips. Uh, and out of the 28 trips, a lot of them were holiday and a lot of them were weekend blitzes that I was doing. So the ability not to be home, it kind of like messes with your scheduling and stuff. But when I was working, um, I, have, I was more productive, more efficient, and more respectful of my time. So what that meant was I valued it so much that I did more in my little time. So I actually love it when people are part-time. And I say that because within our team here, uh, the most effective, efficient people and the ones with better results are those doing it part-time. They've got full-time careers, uh, you know, they've got kids, they're juggling many things. And I, my, you know, I was brought up with this philosophy where my parents said, if you want to give a job to somebody, give it to a busy man or a busy woman. They will get it done in a shorter period of time and they'll get it done better. Whereas if you give the job to somebody that has no work and they have eight hours to do that one thing, they will spread the work and be more inefficient with it. So number one, give yourself a pat on the back if you're doing it part-time. 
Stay part-time as long as you can is my tip to you because you will get more done. You see, it's not about time. It's not about being part-time, full-time. It's not about how much time we have. It's about what's here. How much belief do you have that you're gonna get, that this deal is gonna be amazing? How much belief do you have that 2020 is gonna be the crowning glory of World Ventures? How much belief do you have that 2020 is when everything that we've been dreaming of is all coming into place and that we're gonna rock and roll this deal? See, belief will outweigh time. Time is, is fluid, you have no control over it. Uh, we can only control our action, not our time. So if you're doing this part-time, cool but do it effectively in your part time. I was doing it like lunch to hour every day uh, when I started and three nights a week, I was doing uh, world ventures for about an hour or two every night. So juggling that just meant that I used to fly in, do the presentation and leave. And you know what? When I was part time, there was no emotions involved because I had no time. I had no time to wait for the person to reject me and say, Oh, is this a scam? Is this, this? I was like, Hey buddy, I got to go back to work. Uh, you're in or you're out. I'll WhatsApp you later. I got to go. Like, I was just like, I got people to go show, let's go. So you need to have that posture, especially if you're doing it part-time. Um, if you're part-time, don't be weak, don't be fickle, don't be meek, okay? Just look in the mirror every day and say, I am an IMD, I am this, I am that. Give yourselves the affirmations you need. I am powerful, I'm gonna live my dream life no matter what. And you just go, 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 okay? And it's a four-year career. Okay, the book even written <laughs> is called The Four Year Career. So it is a four year career. If you've been involved for four years or five years already and you're saying, but in the end, I've been around for four years or three years, I've only got a year left. No, starting today, it's your four year career because you're deciding today to do it within four years. So you obviously didn't decide four or five years ago to do it within four years. You just said, I'll see how it goes. And that's how I was. If I knew what I knew now, if I knew that eight years ago, Trust me, I think I would have been IMD a couple years ago. I would have just ranked up and made the million dollar lifetime earners ring some time ago. Uh, I honestly look back now and I think I could have done it a year and a half, at least a year and a half earlier, if not, you know, maybe two years earlier. But it is what it is. You learn as you go, just have fun. But um, Christmas strategy. So that was the second question. Uh, there are amazing trainings by Matt Morris, uh, one of my mentors in World Ventures, number one earner, and Jefferson Santos. Uh, and he is our great, 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 great grandfather in the binary. He's our up, 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 up line. And love him to bits, fantastic guy as well. And basically both of them uh, did a uh, training for the festive season and for the new year. So how to goal set and all that good stuff. So I kind of like paid attention. And the number one tip I got years ago uh, about five years ago, uh, when this information came my way, was you need to do the opposite of everyone else. Most people, it's Christmas break, I've had a stressful year, uh, ups and downs, economy, relationships, my world ventures business, I'm not getting where I want. All you're doing is repeating the negative conversation. So therefore, you want a break. You need a holiday. I get that. I totally get that. Except the training was very simple. Entrepreneurs and people that want to be super successful in life, they have to sacrifice what they want most. In the beginning. So what you have to give up right now is your festive brain, your fog that you have, which is, oh, I have two weeks off or four weeks off. I'm going to just become a toast cucumber or like a little, you know, not think and use my brain. You need to be the person that says, hey, okay, I need to take Christmas day off, New Year's day off. I need a day with my family. I need two or three days off in the festive season. Rest of the week, I'm blitzing, right? You need to be the one that says, hey, let me invite people for an early Christmas gift. You can use dream giver cards to do that if you wanted to you don't have to but you can it's a fantastic way to get uh, your foot in the door and you want to go show more people in the festive season than any other season why number one if your friend's not traveling on holiday they're sitting around at home they're available they're not working 10 15 hours a day like they usually are number two people are relaxed they're more chilled you can receive the information they're more open right now number three they're sitting, if you have an appointment with them, they're in your city and in your country. Whereas this time next year, they should be on a cruise or a dream trip. Give them the vision, cast the vision and say, hey, this time next year, how about, you know, you book a vacation with your family, but we all go together on a vacation with your family and my family. So that's an opportunity if you're not cashing in. But I'm the holiday guy. I'm going to tell you very nicely. If you haven't booked a dream trip, it's probably too late for the season so work your butt off so next time you're on a dream trip but do take the time off do take the one two three days you don't need more than that 
In fact, one day is enough to recalibrate your brain right now. If you're in a position where you're trying to get warmed up and, and run that race when you're getting started, maybe you're ranked up and, uh, okay, great, lucky you. You're ranked up and you want to take a chill pill and you're not on a dream trip right now, that's fine. Take a chill pill. It's cool. But leaders lead from the front. This is the else. So I always have a catch going on a cruise. I can't, I'm not a hypocrite. I am going, but I'm going on the 20th. Uh, I fly from here with the family. There's like 20 of us meeting up. We're going to do the cruise. In fact, Andrew and Sally and the kids are meeting me in Hong Kong thereafter. And we're going to do New Year's Eve together and go drink some cocktails. So from the 20th, I'm off, right? I'm going to be, uh, I'll be available on WhatsApp, but I will be on a cruise. So I'll be like a, about a 10 day trip away. But I know that December, people are kind of winding down and switching this off. And that's when me, my leaders, we do the opposite here. But how we actually kind of maintain ourselves during the festive season, because you're either dropping your team and your mentality during the festive season, or you're increasing it, or you're stabilizing it. And uh, all I ever wanted was to stabilize it, okay? Because the festive season is famous for dropping your team. It's famous. So I just said, even if I maintain, or if I grow a little bit, fantastic. And how do I do that? Well, from now till then, uh, presentations lunchtime presentations, put a Christmas tree up, put Christmas carols up. It's an excuse to have festivities in your house and people and share the joy. So to me, you want to be the one that, you know, spend time with the family, but also be the one that doesn't make excuses. This is the time to cash in. Brilliant. Um, the, the, the takeaway that I got from the whole five minutes that you took to answer that question was we all got the, same 24, hours. <laughs> we all got the same 24 hours in a day, but we need to be productive with the time that we have available to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you also mentioned um, something about a four-year career um, in World Ventures, you know, to be successful at anything. And in order to have the four-year career, it starts with personal growth development. So let's, let's evolve a little bit into the de personal development side. So I've got a challenge to everybody on this call right now that I would like everybody to commit to reading at least one book over the festive season. Um, those are the days when they sit on the couch. Those are their free time periods, my me time. And in order to do that, you know, can you recommend a few books that has basically helped you to think differently, act differently, and most of all, get you to IMD through your mindset changes? So are there some books that you could recommend for us? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, first of all, whether it's books or, you know, uh, YouTube videos, it's, it's, either, it's neither here or there, but it's basically gathering uh, knowledge from somebody else that's studied a topic and giving you a distilled version, which is a great way to summarize it. So I have a, like an annual list if that makes sense, like a permanent list. I'm not a reader, by the way. I became a leader, a reader with World Ventures because they said, uh, re, you know, leaders are readers and readers are leaders. So I had to start loving how to read. But anyways, it's a good start. Uh, the book I love reading at the big of each year or even during this period right now is um, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. So The Slight Edge is really an amazing, amazing book. And by the way, also mentions the food thing that I told you guys about very briefly in one sentence. But if you're reading it, you will remember me when you're reading that sentence. Uh, and simply put, uh, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson is more about habit stacking. And what I like to take it one step further is what you can take out of that is micro habit stacking. So what does that mean? Let's say you're trying to build a habit, exercise, and what do we do? We tell our brain, I need to start exercising this year. I'm going to lose weight and gain muscle. I'm going to do one hour a day. Well, well, you're setting yourself up for failure. So take the slight edge book and then remember my words. Take that and develop it into micro habit stacking because you're way better off saying, hey, well, I'm new to the gym. I'm not going to make excuses. I'm going to do something every day, but I'm going to do... Um, 30 jumping jacks and 30 push-ups, And basically I'm going to do like 10 minutes. Okay. You're better off doing that and building that micro habit and then building it up as opposed to jumping for the big thing and then failing. Okay. So Jeff Olson, uh, that's a fantastic book. It's an annual read from me because it reminds me that, you know, humans are discipline is what pays you well and humans are really bad at it. I'm bad at it. So I have to remind myself every December Jan to have it stack. So Thank you for the reminder. It's, already, it's actually on my list anyways. So I will be getting to that book. The other book that I will tell you is great for mindset uh, is The Magic of Thinking Big. It's not me saying that. It's Byron Schrag, And I listen to all the uh, top, top, top earners in the company. And uh, he mentioned it one too many times and I had to go get it. So I'm on, 
uh, read number two on the second read. About to finish that actually. So that one simply allows you. I had a really good conversation yesterday at a party I had to go for my family, and uh, this lady's going through a slight mini depression. She's in a, she's about to enter depression. And she can feel it, and it happens for all of us. You know, power cuts, potholes, economy. Uh, foreign currency, exchange rates, hyperinflation, food shortages right now. So it happens, but it's okay. She, she was aware of it. And the magic of thinking big helps you remind yourself that the, your power of the thoughts you have can change your life for the negative or the positive. So be very, very aware when you're having a negative one. So that book is a good one to kind of like skim through, maybe highlight some notes in there. Um, and my last one that I'll tell you, so what I've given you, the two I've given you now are personal development. I'm a believer of two things. You need to be uh, literate in personal development and literate in your industry. So when I went to go study uh, biochem, I had to go study that. I went to go study environmental education, I had to go study books on that. I went to go study, um, what was it, personal development management, which is human resource, I had to go study that. Now, we're studying an industry here. So if you're doing it part-time, you better be good at it. Like if you're gonna be part-time, design it so that you can be part-time and you can earn full-time. That's what my goal was. I wanted to work two days a week and earn a full-time paycheck. And that's pretty much what's happening now, okay? But it took me. So the, the, I'm gonna give you skills. Every, you might, if you know me, you've heard me say it, you're gonna be bored of me saying it. Your first year in network marketing, Mark Garn so I've given you three books, two in the personal development space and one in the skills base. It is so skills. What skills does it take to build network marketing? So read that book and follow Matt Morris on YouTube. Matt Morris on YouTube, Unemployed Millionaire. Those skills, uh, those two skills for the YouTube channel and the book, that's your ammunition for network marketing. Uh, Magic of Thinking Big and um, Habit Stacking because of the slight edge. Those two will give you the mindset and building your habits up for this year. What should I say? Brilliant, brilliant. So we are all sorted with three books. Thanks for that. So we'll come back in the near, absolutely firing. So I'm going to close on my very last question. Anand, you've been an absolute rock star and a legend. I love having you on the calls because you just add such value to us. So let's talk a little bit about training. Let's close on training. And I'll tell you why. Because in February, the 21st to the 23rd, Momentum is happening in Cape Town, and you are one of our NITA trainers that will be on stage with us. So I thought this is the most um, best person to ask this question, question to. So for those people on the call who have not attended a major training event yet, um, can you talk them through, first of all, the importance of training? And secondly, what would they expect from International Marketing Director Anand Patel on stage? Okay, guys. Okay, so um, that, that's, a, that's a good question. You know, the main thing is this. You need to, number one, accept the fact that you signed up for a journey in business, okay? In order to do that, unlike conventional businesses or conventional employment, um, we are here to learn from people who have been there, done that, got the t-shirt, got the car, got the house, and got the bank balance. Got the bank balance, important stuff here. And that's going to be what you want. So take advice and knowledge and skills only from people who are qualified to do so. And in this industry, uh, we're not every, not every uh, network marketer is lucky, like us in World Ventures. We have a system, what we call the leadership factory, that is creating people and creating freedom, okay? And if you're not gonna capitalize and use that and cash that in, instead of cashing in on it, you're making excuses about the cash that it takes to get there. That's not gonna get you to become an independent business owner. Okay, and those are important things because remember, when you when you own a business outside World Ventures, you understand the value of the business and that you, if you are the smartest person in your business, you're screwed. If you are not uh, going out there and getting more skills in whatever industry business you have, maybe it's clothing or fashion or consultancy or whatever, if you're not going out there constantly getting information from people that are better than you and bringing it back home then you're going to be average your whole life. And my worst fear, and people know this because I stuck it on Facebook the other day, my worst fear is average. Living in an average life, 
everything being average and just it's so gray and beige so my number one thing about getting to training is you need to be sold on the fact that you want to get to training no one's going to convince you number two your sponsor your upline leader is not getting a commission cut because you go to training it's your call it's your choice it's your investment the only thing that i do for my team uh and i forgive me to remind them again is if they're in my team and i walk up to training and they don't get the value that they wanted from that training i do what matt morris taught me years and years ago I just say, hey, I've got a money back guarantee. You walk up to training in Cape Town and you're in my team and you don't get value for money at 5 p.m. on Sunday, come find me. I'll be in the front somewhere. I'll be on WhatsApp or whatever. Find me and I'll give you cash back for your ticket, okay? So I'm going to give money back guarantee for anyone that comes to the training in, in Cape Town. So that's the confidence I have that people need to be around a new energy. If you want better results or different results, you can't keep doing what you're doing. So change the recipe. If you're new to World Ventures or new to the training system, some people have been around for a year and never been to a training. This is your chance to get to that training and say, hey, you know what? Let me get all in and go invest myself in the personal development and the training and learn from people who've been there and done that. Number two uh, question was, what am I going to bring or what, what are you going to expect? I think you're going to expect a very honest, upfront person. That's the kind of person I hope to be and I hope I am. Uh, and I'm not going to make it shiny or make it look good or I'm not the rah-rah guy either. So you won't be seeing me ranting and raving and shouting at the top of my voice. What you will see is very simple. What is it going to take? personally up here in your mindset how do you fight the demons in your mindset i'm from zimbabwe guys you can <laughs> you can fight demons trust me when i say this they're everywhere at every level there's a new demon to fight and i'm ready okay i'm ready with a pitchfork because I i'm just used to it and i want you guys to know that if someone like me can become you know you can go from quiet uh, from insecure, from uh, a shy, introverted kind of, I'm a twin, so I was the introverted twin, and you can blossom into something else. I'm not fully blossomed yet, I'm in that journey too, but if I can do that, so can you, and I wanna bring you the recipe that it took me to get there, and of course, along the way, the basic skills on how to feed belief into people in a somewhat dysfunctional economy. You know, this is that, that's what Zimbabwe is, and understanding that, uh, learning from our journey and our mistakes is the best value because when I got started, I was grateful to the men and women before me. I stand on their shoulders because the Carrie Leishas and the, uh, the Carrie and Leisha Snyder is the, the Matt Morris's of the world. You know, the people that came here and fed into us in South I was flying to South Africa for training at that time. And they're the ones that allowed me to walk that, that step, step one, step two, step three. And it is because of that system that I am where I am today. So I expect and I hope you guys do the same exact thing and you follow that same steps and be patient with yourself, okay? Uh, overnight success is never overnight success. People always say Beyonce came out of nowhere and guess what her answer was? She said, yeah, I was an overnight success that took 20 years to become an overnight success. Now, World Venture is not a 20 year system, okay? Network marketing is not a 20 year system. The book says it all. Richard Bliss wrote a book, The Four-Year Career. Four years, guys. Today's your first day in four years, okay? I'm excited because today's my first day. I need to treat myself like a baby and just get started again and pretend I have no idea what's going on and just get started. And I'll tell you now, the demons you're facing right now, I'm facing too. I say that from a point of humility, okay? Because when you hit IMD, you literally are starting again. I don't look at my IMD part. I just say I need to start again. I need to train a new team of people. I got to get basics and I got to be speaking at an entry level point because my new members have no clue what they're doing. Just because they've signed up with me does not make them a million dollar earner tomorrow, okay? Or a hundred thousand dollar earner tomorrow. They have to go through the same thing. So I better be the guy that I was eight years ago. And when I was enrolling people and getting excited, that's what I need. So there you go, guys. That's what I'm excited about Cape Town. Well, you know, just the four years that I've known you on and your hero's journey has been absolutely amazing. So I'm just so grateful that I'm going to be sitting in the front row learning to make millions from the person who's already made millions themselves. So that's the great thing about this business. We learn from the people that are really successful, that have paid the price and done it. So we can obviously collapse our time frame. So Arnold, thank you so much for being on the call. You know, on behalf of Team Expansion, we really, really thank you. I know that you're a very busy individual traveling. I know you've just come back from an RTE um, in Eastern Asia. And uh, we can't wait to see you on stage in Cape Town. So thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.
Thank you. Sorry I took 19 minutes too long, but it was fantastic. Thank you so much. Always worth it. Thank you so much. God bless. Take, Take care. care. Those guys.